Ah, yes. I think this room where the pigs are bred will do just fine. Very well. <laughs> uh, Twin Wu, how about we move all the little children from Primary 1 to Team 2's pig pen? Then we can vacate this house and use it for middle school classes. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Put children and piglets together? That's ridiculous. There's nothing but two old souls left in that pig pen anyway. You might as well sell them. Well, sir, what do you think? Well, that's fine. Sell them. Ah, but Jun Wu has to agree to it first. I know these pigs belong to your Xin Xiaowan team, and the property is yours as well. I know Chen Wu. He must be thinking that this good fortune doesn't involve Tin Tao Wan and isn't too pleased about it. It's too bad. His kids are too small to know any better. <laughs> <laughs> Do you plan on breeding any more pigs? All right, tell me then. Where are we going to breed them, huh? <sighs> Chen Wu! Listen, Xiao Ping and Run Shang both went to school for many years, and we shouldn't let that go to waste. We must find a way for them to teach the children in the village what they've learned. I know you know this. You know what? If you think this is right, then who am I to oppose any of this? Well, <laughs> all right then. Since you both come to an agreement, uh, then I won't decline either. Uh, we should let the two kids own their skills at school for a few years. <laughs> right. Okay. Haven't these clothes already been washed several times? Why wash them again? Listen, in a few days' time, classes will begin at the primary school, and I will finally be a teacher. Right around this time every year, I get quite nervous. I'd worry about what to wear to school. I hope you don't think less of me if I told you I felt my clothes were ugly. I so hated having to wear them. I felt terrible. I'd see my clothes, take a look at them, and I just feel uncomfortable. How I wished I could throw them away. I wanted to burn them all, but I couldn't do that. That meant I'd have to go to school naked. <laughs> all right. Here. Xiaoping. Yes? Come here. What is it? Sit here and take off your shoes. Why should I take off just my shoes? It. Listen to me. Ever since we were little kids, you would always borrow my shoes. <laughs> if they were too small for you, you would flatten the back so you could wear them like slippers. If the shoes were too big, you would tie some string on the shoes, and then you would tie them to your feet. After all these years, you've never once worn shoes that fit you. And look at the effect it's had on your feet. I'm used well, to it. What do you think of my shoes, huh? These are canvas with rubber soles, a reward given to me by the commune. They're almost new, but they're a bit too small for me, you know? You can have them. But I... I'll wear your shoes instead. But... Here. Uh, try them on. Uh, come on, you can't be a teacher and not have a decent pair of shoes of your own. <laughs> try them on. <laughs> you didn't have to. Back then, I would reserve fancy shoes like these for Sundays when Runya returned to the village and when I'd have meetings at the commune. Those are really the only times I'd wear these shoes. <laughs> oh. There's a meeting at the commune this coming Sunday, so you'll still have to lend those to me. Sure. This time, I'll borrow your shoes, huh? <laughs> your shoes aren't too bad on my feet, though. Look, Do they fit? Of course, they fit me perfectly. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Uncle Yutian, listen. Thank you for everything you've done for Xiaoping. Here, have a cigarette. Take it. I'm not smoking. What's wrong? A letter just came. There's a quota for teachers, and the commune has only given us one slot. And I'm certain that they'll give it to Tian Fu Tang's son, Run Shang. I'm sorry, Xiaoping. You won't be a teacher this year. How can that be? Why are they only giving us one? That makes no sense! What's going on? What's happening here? Xiaoping, I'm very sorry. I failed you, and I know that makes me a terrible uncle. Wallowing won't do anything to change this. Come on now. We have to ask him if there's- Brother, I'm not going. Xiaoping, I'm giving you every right to beat me up right now if you want. Please hit me. I deserve it.
What kind of a person would beat up his own uncle? The kind whose uncle has failed him terribly. I didn't do enough to help you. Whatever the outcome, I still want to thank you. You're too kind to me, Xiao Ping. I don't deserve such a good nephew. How will I ever forgive myself? Uncle! Come on, we need to let it this. go. There's only room for one teacher. Brother, I can't take it from Runchai. But what about you? Xiao Ping! Why are you stopping? Because we're here, right? You're a teacher now. You don't need me to accompany you. Go on. I can't believe there's a quota. If you don't go, I don't either. If you can't be a teacher, I don't want to be one either. Runchang, are you sure? If you don't want to be a teacher, it's your call, not mine. Xiao Ping. From then on, he accepted the sort of life he would have to face. Every single day henceforth, he would experience the same tears, the illnesses, the hunger, and the struggles of his family. He no longer had a place to stay. So after eating rice porridge at home, he journeyed to Tsingtiawan to find a place to sleep. Every day, determined, he would wake up early. Work meant he had to travel every morning to Tianwan at Tiantiaglao. Unfortunately, this meant he would never have time to read a book. Doing hard labor all day sapped him of his energy, and he'd fall asleep as soon as he got home. Hey, that grass, don't eat that! You shouldn't be eating it. Brother. What are you doing just standing there? I've come to see you. Is this... Is this where you are staying? Hey, don't underestimate this animal, Shen. I'll have you know it's strong enough to withstand any earthquake or natural disaster. Don't worry about me, brother. Because someday, one way or another, I'm going to find a decent place to stay. You do know what they always say, right? Stop that! But no mountain is too high if you never stop climbing. But won't you get tired? You rest a little, then you climb some more. Xiaoping! Hey, brother Xiaowan. Hey. Come, let's go to the Shekeshi commune. What for? The armed forces are recruiting! I've registered, and have to go back. You'd better come with me, or our friendship is over. Okay, here we are! Come on. Hurry up! Hurry! Xiaoping! Hey, hurry! Please, fall in line. Who needs a registration form? Okay, answer me. Why do you want to join the army? I really love the uniforms. Xiaoping, you'll take care of my parents, right? Yes, don't worry. I'm leaving, but you're not. I can't go anywhere. My family, they still need me around. But that means you'd have to abandon the dreams you had of exploring the rest of the world. Xiaoping! Runsha. You found your calling. Something you deem worthy of dedicating your entire life to. That's rare, and I am proud of you. 
best of luck. You go. Explore the world for me. Of course. I'll remember that. Father? Brother? Oh, shit. Why are you crying? <laughs> Serving in the army is an honorable thing. Here, here, Unshai. Here, take Mother. this. Put it on. Here, here. Let me help you with this. But amid the flurry and excitement, Xiao Ping felt an incredible sense of loss. It was Run Shang, after all, who had journeyed with him through the best days of his life as a student. At the time, they were both so young, innocent, and naive. Farewell, my dear friend. Wait, I'm in, I'm in. So, Uncle, has Run Shang left? He has. Do you have any idea why he left for the army? No, I don't. Run Shang wanted to give you the chance to become the village teacher. He gave up his position so you could have it. Oh, he also asked that I tell you he won't be needing his bicycle anymore. So it's yours now. Runshan, my old friend, please wait for him. Xiaoping couldn't stop himself as everything came flooding back. Memories of all the times they spent together clouded his vision, and it came without warning. Suddenly, Xiaoping felt a familiar anguish rising in his throat. Teardrops streamed down his face, and quickly they fell to the ground in the same village Runshan had just left behind. That he hadn't bade his friend a proper goodbye was tearing him up inside. Please turn to page 12 of your textbook. Today, we will learn Prelude to Water Melody, Crushing the Gang of Four. Prelude to Water Melody, Crushing the Gang of Four. Guomoro. A matter of great joy to the people. Ferreting out the Gang of Four. Political and literary rogues. Political and literary rogues. Villainous advisor Chang. Villainous advisor Chang. In the beginning, we were birds that soared free. Fly away. Fly to the glorious mountains beyond the dark clouds. Fly on to that place, to the turquoise cape. Only the wind is dancing with joy, accompanied by me. It's coming. Xiao Xia, we should go! Xiao Ping, you must remember this I don't remember! <laughs> Xiao Xia, you know what? I often feel like I could be someone sitting on that train without a care for where its next stop may be. One day, Xiao Xia, I shall board that train and then I shall go wherever it takes me. Tian has a lot of historical and cultural sites. It has the best university and the biggest factories. I'd like to go to Xi'an. And the capital is Beijing. You know, they say Tiananmen Square is bigger than anything we have here. Xiaoping, I want you to go to Beijing with me. Then I'll go to Beijing with you. I'll remember that. Xiaoping, you mustn't forget. You're not like everyone else. You're extraordinary, and the whole world is yours for the taking. I'm an ordinary person, 
who will work harder for an extraordinary life. When you strive for perfection, the flower blooms of your youth, and when it finally wilts, it wilts majestically. Students, first of all, let's talk about two characters today. I can only hope that you don't have to wait until my age to understand what this means. The world. It's still strange to me. I never washed my feet before bed. But now look at what you've done, you've spoiled me. Now I can't fall asleep without clean feet. Why are you complaining? It's a good habit to keep. Don't you sleep better with your feet all nice and warm? I, Sun Shawan, am a blessed man with all the sacrifices my wife made. As long as you're good to me, it's no sacrifice at all. What? You think I'm good to you? Good indeed. Shawan, don't you think I should write to my father? We could ask him to send us food. Hey, don't you dare write your father that letter. Why not? You'd be asking too much of him. Our entire family is too big. How much food does he have? There's no way he could send enough for all of us. That's what I was thinking at first. But I mean, what if it was just the two of us? It wouldn't take too long for us to become a well-off family in our village. With all the work we do, we wouldn't need to ask for anyone's help. Between the two of us, we could live a comfortable life. What? What now? You want to abandon our family? You need to calm down. I haven't finished explaining. And don't pull my hair. I know what I'm talking about. And Lan Sheng, she's growing up. And she'll start high school soon. She'll have to go to the county. Your elder sister is already struggling with her own two children. Soon Mao Dan will be going to school, and you know her husband won't work, so we have to provide for them too. If we leave the family, that just leaves your father with Xiaoping. They, they won't be able to provide for them. So after all that, what exactly are you trying to say? Why can't you wait for me to finish talking? Well, hurry up and tell me then. I also know that you would rather leave our marriage then leave your family. So every time these ideas come up again, I try and forget. Really? Yes, really. Because I'm your wife, I have to support this family with you. Ah. Oh. So after beating around the bush, that was all you wanted to say? That's it. All this talk has got me come ah! here. You really are <laughs> such a good wife to me. I broke the lamp. What? Look. That's what made all the noise. I would really like to have your child soon. We've been married for more than a year now. Why haven't I gotten pregnant? If you're worried, we can go and see a doctor. By the way, Runya's getting married. Have you heard the news? Yes, I know. And to Li Xiangxian. What is he like? Tell me, is he nice? I guess. It's simple. What else would a woman want in her life if not to find someone who will treat her well? Yes. If Li Sang Xian does take care of her, Runya will be very happy. <gasps> What's wrong? 
Huh? What's going on? Hmm? Do you remember when we got married? Runya gave us these satin quilt covers. She's getting married. Now we have to give her a gift. Do we have to return these covers? But of course not. Here's 50 yuan. My father left me that around the time he left. I thought I would use it to eventually sew a large cloak for you. But you take it and get Runya something nice. And this too. This was my dowry. You can present this to her like a special dowry from brother to sister. What do you think? Shonian. You're too kind. As far as Xiao Wan was concerned, the dark clouds that were bearing down on him because of Runya had finally begun to slowly dissipate. And in their place was He Xiao Lian's warm, loving affections that now lit up the shadows where the dark clouds once hovered. I'm not going. Don't look at me. I'm not going either. And you, you should know why. I don't care what you say. I want to go. I want to go to Runya's wedding. Mother, the county town is too far for you. I don't Let's tune on a trip, right? Wait for her to come back home. You could visit her then. It really doesn't matter who goes, but someone has to. What if Wamangya goes? He'd love that. No way. He'd make a scene again. How about Uncle Yu Tian? He's a brigade leader after all. He knows enough people. Maybe we could get him to help us send our gift over. That might work. With a wedding like Runyas, a lot of leaders will attend for sure. Uncle Yu Tang loves this sort of vocation. He is best suited to go. I'll let him know then. Finally, Runya and Li Xiang were married as one. Her destiny was without mercy. This was not a celebration, but a funeral for the end of her youth. Runya couldn't help but feel the world spinning and felt completely lost in the sea of people. In the midst of the buzzing festivities, she could only hear that warm and comforting familiar voice as if it were coming from afar. Alas, the white sailboat in her imagination took her back to the childhood she once had, making a stop at every welcoming dock and harbor, waiting in her memory. Shattered, undoubtedly, everything had been shattered. Greetings. Ah, Uncle Lu Tiang, you're back. Yes, I am. I am. How did the wedding go? I'll tell you about it later. I'll talk did to you, you in a bit. you just come from Runya's wedding? I did. I did. You know, this uncle of yours learned a lot from yesterday. More importantly, did you give Runya her gift? Runya and Shangsha, they were both busy. They had to keep entertaining their guests. So I handed it to Tian Fu Tao. See? Uncle I did. Uncle Lu Tiang, why hey. don't you come and tell us all about the wedding? Yes, yes, let me tell you. I will tell everyone oh, about it. Guys. All right. Why? What's going on? It was an extravagant wedding. It was once in a lifetime. And was held at none other than the fanciest ballroom of the county party's <laughs> committee's guest house. Oh, yeah. You know, Runya looked really nice. She was a beautiful bride. The courtyard was packed with all sorts of cars. Yes, and even tractors, too. Almost everyone at the county level and from the communes were there. But then you wouldn't know it. All those tables and all those chairs just weren't enough for everyone. They didn't know what to do. Too many guests had arrived. 
and there weren't that enough there. seats, so I came up with an idea. I asked the staff to bring more chairs and to add a few more seats to each table. Secretary Futang was so grateful to me, he insisted I sit at the table for the guests of honor. Yeah? Huh? <laughs> You shared a table with a guest of honor? I did. I actually did. <laughs> I was sharing a table with important people. Do you want to know who else was at my table? Who? Why, only the very important leaders of the county. Oh. oh. Our branch secretary. You know how strong-willed he can get, right? Yes. At the wedding, Secretary Futang was acting like a small-time county bumpkin who had never even been outside. Every time he'd shake hands with any of the leaders, his hand wouldn't stop shaking. I'd never seen that before! <laughs> Wait, did you talk to any of the leaders? I didn't! Those who were seated at our table were either leaders or people of status. Who was I to think I could talk to any of them? I left immediately after the banquet. You're just like Branch Secretary Futang. You're just as much of an awkward small-time countryman as he was. <laughs> Speaking of Uncle Futang... Uncle Hello, Secretary. You changed! You drank and ate to your heart's content, and you left me all alone in there! Calm down, not at all, Secretary. <laughs> I thought you were busy entertaining the guests. Uh... Show on. I was meaning to thank you for the gift that you gave me. It's no problem. I remember you did the same when I got married myself. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Futang, Yerunya is lucky to have married that man. She can claim kinship to a county leader now. <laughs> so when can we expect your entire family to move over to the county? I like living in Shuangshui Village. I'm not going anywhere. Yes, that's uh, right. You heard him. And what was that you said? You think Runyo is lucky to have married him? I'll have you know it happens to be the other way around. They're lucky Runyo married him. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might have forgotten. Runya also has an uncle who's a county leader. So you better watch your tongue. You understand? Xia Wan thought about Runya and hoped that she was able to find consolation in her marriage. Perhaps that wasn't the worst that could happen, although it would be a wonderful change for people to decide on a life partner on their own. Why did you put your old clothes back on? Uh, what are you doing? You should... Sleep on your own bed, and I'll take the cot. We're not sharing the bed? If you don't like it, I could leave. O okay then. I get it. You're a little shy. Hill, and fine days rolling down the hill. Sun shower keeps repeating the word. Yang o yang o yang song bao. Chives are found in the front ditch. Scallions sway in the back. Hansel yang is repeating the words. Mo 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 go ya. This couple is proof of true love. The people get so envious of. <laughs> Uncle Wan Yu, why would you sing a song like that? Ah, Shu Lian, take that as a compliment from Uncle Wan Yu. That's what you get when you're the village's favorite husband and wife. What are you saying <laughs> is true. Look at my Ying Hua. She'd rather spend all day gossiping with friends. Shu Lian should spend time with her to influence her. <laughs> Young, let's sing together. Yeah. Oh, let's go up the hill and find the things we the hill. So show on keeps beating the words. Is there enough firewood? Yes, there is. I'll be done in a minute. <laughs> hey, father. Where's Xiao Ping? Why isn't he back for dinner? He's still in school. He's tutoring a child, Sin San Choi, who happens to be the offspring of Sen Guangliya, a bad man. Oh. Hmm. My Xiao Ping. He's a teacher now. It's great. My Xiao Ping. It's grown up. Grandma, mm. Xiao Ping's in charge of educating the village children and disciplining them too. It's pretty good. Well, <laughs> my Xiao Ping is a teacher now. He teaches children. Will he be teaching Xiao An's children anytime soon? Grandma's <laughs> been waiting for great grandchildren. Is anything the matter? Oh, 
Uh, we're all right, Father. We've already gone to see a doctor. He checked both of us up. He says we're fine. That's good to know. Why, you're both still young. Having children later is no big deal, right? Work for a few years. Try to save up for a better life. Here you go. Lan Sheng. Thank Here. I'll feed mm. Grandmother. Lan Sheng. You can have my soup. <sighs> You're angry with me, aren't you? I just know you're angry with me. You haven't spoken a single word. Is this because I gave you the better portion of soup for dinner? So you knew. I didn't want to talk about it anymore, but since you brought it up, I'll explain. Our family is made up of a lot of people. And that soup was diluted to make it enough for all of us, and you thought it was acceptable to favor me? You're unbelievable! You do most of the manual labor. Of course you should get more soup. Our family only gets a few yellow steam buds every few days. That's barely enough at all, especially for those working in the field. It's hard enough for the people who stay at home. What more for those who do hard work? Do you really think that was right? Don't you try anything like that again. You should remember to respect your elders. Every meal, we've had diluted black beans and soup. If we just had a few more steam buns to go with every day's diluted porridge, I'd be far more understanding. You work so hard. You can't starve yourself like this. I only did that because I love you, and I was taking then care of you. Then don't love me or take care of me. My father's getting older, Lan Chang is a growing teenager, grandma's half paralyzed, and you give me better soup? Be careful, Sholian. You might be a good wife to me, but I could still hit you. So hit me then. Before I was married, I wasn't worried about being poor. I thought as long as we worked hard, we'd be sure to have a good life. It was after we got married that I realized the grain being distributed just wasn't enough. We'd have to provide for shopping and lunching. Now that shopping's graduated, things have improved a little. Xiaowan, I'm not afraid of going hungry myself, but I do everything to make There's sure that no you There's no point don't... in arguing about this. Is this how you tell me you're sick of sharing this rotten married life? Huh? Remember this. I'd rather go hungry than let my family starve while I get better portions, and that's it! Listen, Sholian, I know in my heart that you love me, and you're only concerned. I know this is how you care for me, and I understand why you did that. I know your intentions are pure. <sighs> how about we stop talking about food? I'm starting to get hungry here. You're hungry? Let me make you something. Don't worry about it, I'll eat tomorrow. Hey. You know what? I believe there is something besides food that's ultimately satisfying and fulfilling. Really? What is it? Making babies with you. Oh, stop okay, it. Okay, okay. I'm not worried. As long as I'm with you, I can endure any hardship. The doctor, he says there's nothing wrong with us, and we can expect a healthy child. If there's a problem, it's probably me. What do you mean? No mountain is too high if you never stop climbing. I'm going to keep working and find a way to improve our lives. Can you wait?
Take this too. Mm. Have a little bit more. Thanks. Oh. It's been a while since Runya has come by for a visit, huh? She's been busy with classes. She works overtime a lot too. And when she gets home, she's still busy. Oh. Well, it's admirable. Being a teacher, but it seems so tiring. Hey, you should be sure she's not overworked, all right? You should be careful. Your father and I would like to have a grandchild. Mother. Hmm? I'm taking a trip to Beijing soon. What? For work? Yes. But you and Runya just got married. Can you bear to leave her alone at home while you go out of town? No way. Tell your superiors to find someone else. Now why would I do that? I enjoy these business trips and it's a privilege to go. Well, bring her along then. Let her accompany you to what? Beijing. Bring her along? She hasn't been feeling too well. I probably shouldn't. Is she always sick? Oh. You know what I think? She should be eating more. Bring home some food. I have some soup. I made it for her. Make sure she eats it, okay? Mm. Here, piggy, 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 piggy. Right. Stay right there. I'm going to reward you with more food if you finish everything in front of you. Be a good pig and eat all of that. Well, what do you know? You really do eat like a pig. Now, wait a minute! What is the meaning of this? These buns are for Grandma. Why would you give them to me? Hey, I'm talking to you! Just eat. All year round, we ration our supply of wheat. Don't pretend you don't know. These are reserved for Grandma for special occasions. You knew that! Please remember that in our household, only Grandma gets to eat these white steamed buns. Not even Mao Dan can touch them. I'll hit you if you do this again. Don't look at me like that. Hey! Xiao Lian! What is wrong with you? Xiao Wan. I heard everything you said. I asked Xiao Lian to give you the buns. Please mind your own business. This isn't good for us. Hey, do that again and I'll beat you up. Hey, I will beat you too. Mother. Wash your feet. Ernia. Runya, we've been married for months now. And you still refuse to sleep with me. Everybody says I've been so lucky that I married someone so pretty. But what does that matter? I might as well be single. I'd know what to expect if I were single. Runya, I beg you, please. Stop torturing me like this, please! Your bed is made. It's ready for you to sleep in. Will I be sleeping here alone for the rest of my life? This is your home too, you know. But you refuse to undress even when you're about to sleep. What do you think of me? Sleep how you want, but leave me be. This is not how newlyweds should be. We're like strangers. Just strangers sharing a room. Sheng Xian, please give me a little more time. Here. What? What do you think you're doing bringing these back to me? Take them back where you got them! But father asked me to give them to you! What? I'm telling you, he said to give them! Why don't you just eat them already? You didn't have dinner, so I know you're hungry! How could you be so stubborn? Don't you understand? Do you know how old grandma is? 
Her teeth have gone bad, which means she can't eat coarse grain! We're much better off than she is and should be more considerate, don't you get it? I know that! I'm not taking anything from her! She can't finish so many in one meal anyway. I simply took what she couldn't eat and passed them on to you. I just wanted you to eat better. How I dare you talk to me like that? <gasps> Grandma can eat one steamed bun a day. We only make five buns at a time. And you have the gold to take two? Just because my father said so? I just wanted to make sure you were eating properly. What is wrong with you, huh? <gasps> 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 Hey. What's wrong? What? Don't push me. I'm already with child. What? You're what? I said I'm pregnant. I went to the doctor and he confirmed it. I'm going to have a baby. Is that true? <laughs> what? Why are you doing that? Oh, wow. This is great. Oh, yeah. 